Hi everybody, uh, thank you for coming to tonight's presentation. We have a, a, the pleasure and the privilege of uh, welcoming a distinguished guest here to AUBG. Um, this is uh, uh, Ms. Liliana Pavlova, who is uh, the Minister of uh, Regional Development and Public Works. And uh, uh, Minister Pavlova is uh, a second term minister. She's uh, coming here for the first time to AUBG. So I would like to uh, give her a warm welcome and uh, also uh, uh, thank you for finding the time today. We should also uh, note that uh, actually all of these people are taking time away from uh, finals and exams and, and lectures. So uh, this is great uh, attendance for something at this time of year. Uh, so thank you all for coming and, and I want to welcome the minister. Um, so give her a warm, warm welcome. <laughs> To add to that, a uh, thank you to the President's Office and the Political Science Club for co-organizing this event, and of course, Minister Pavlova. Uh, she is a very unique minister. Uh, she is among our youngest ministers and our most popular ministers, if you look at the rankings, and the most successful because her ministry, uh, ever since she took over, really shows results. And many of you are experiencing these results firsthand because we now travel to Blagovgrad much faster. Uh, she's also, <laughs> uh, she's also uh, unique in, in another way that she holds a doctor, doctorate in economics and as you know, uh, doctorates are not very popular among politicians. Uh, she also understands the academic aspect. Uh, uh, she holds a master's degree in public administration and European integration and a bachelor's degree in international economic relations uh, from our own uh, University of National and World Economy in Sofia. Uh, she has uh, academic publications, again, unlike most ministers, on um, uh, subjects of administration and management, strategic management in the public sector. And she is uh, currently the Minister of Regional Development and Public Works, but she was also the Minister of Regional Development and Public Works of the previous Gerb Gerb government. Before that, she was a Deputy Minister, and before that, she was an expert in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, so we're really lucky to have a person so outgoing and so successful and result-oriented here with us. And please do ask as many questions as you uh, as you have. Uh, she will be very glad to uh, to answer those questions. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. For this Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very much for being here today with me. Thank you for your time. This was, I uh, was asking, is it, isn't it too late for you, young people, in this time of year? And, and I really appreciate uh, uh, this uh, great interest. It is indeed my first time here in the university, and it's really my pleasure. I like it very much. I had the chance to walk around to see what are the facilities, and I'm really impressed. Uh, I'll try to really to very, very briefly, even though sometimes I tend to be too long, so please do stop me anytime you think uh, you need to ask any question. Uh, to, to outline uh, how we see the regional policy, how we do plan uh, the regional policy, and uh, what are the instruments we're using, but I will be more than happy to have more QA session and to, to have uh, feedback from you and. Uh, to have more and more questions. Um, I'm sure I, I, I might have a lot of questions, and this is really more, more challenging and more interesting for me. Uh, I really have a chance uh, to be a second mandate minister, but I assume myself as a more technocrat. I'm not so much a politician, even though I'm already in politics since 2009. I was never thinking of joining the politics, but you say this was the time uh, when I was saying never say never. It happened two times to me. Once I said I will never become a politician. I'm already a politician for six years. Uh, and uh, I was working in the public administration since 1999, when I first joined the Ministry of Regional Development and uh, Public Works as uh, junior expert and then uh, I moved to the Ministry of Finance when I was head of financial management and control over the European Union funding for more than eight years. So when I left the Ministry of Regional Development, I said I'll never come back. And then in 2009, I came back as a minister of the same ministry. So 
just to once again to prove that uh, we shall never say never. Um, in, the, in that period, in fact, um, working, uh, I started working when I was a student in the National University uh, of Economy in Sofia in 1999, and I joined in a certain project, you funded project already at that time. So I might say that I have 20 years experience in managing uh, projects in different capacities of mine. Uh, so I believe this is uh, this is my my biggest, let's say, part of my professional experience. Uh, and uh, it really helped me a lot uh, when we were when I joined in first as a deputy minister in the previous mandate of uh, Mr. Our Prime Minister Borisov government, because I was invited by the existing president of the country, Mr. Plevnele, to join in his team just because I was not a politician, I was an expert in uh, EU project management, uh, and uh, he was so much willing to form a team of young people who are uh, well acquainted, let's say, with uh, EU rules and really trying to, to have the best way to absorb the funding, also not absorb, but really to invest the funds. And that uh, gave me a great chance to really to, to, to change the way administration, I believe, works. Because when we started, uh, there were just kind of, a, let's say, case-by-case -case projects. And, uh, uh, not so much, let's say, uh, organized in a way that have the long-term strategy, have the long-term uh, policy on uh, how to to get more value added on the top. It was more, I could say, case by case. Once a certain open call for project is launched, our municipalities, our local authorities, or NGOs, or any kind of project promoters just apply for the for the for a different project, how we ended up we ended up with uh, some sometimes funny but sometimes not so funny uh, stories of projects which were which were implemented just for the sake of absorbing the funds and this is the biggest mistake I believe we we used to have uh, just for the sake of absorption, not to think so much first what should be the value added of the current project and what should be the global objective of on how to invest uh, in the different areas. Uh, like we do, like we have, in, we used to have one project uh, as an example in one small municipality where we were providing them opportunity to invest in energy efficiency, in improving the school, uh, the school infrastructure, and then for I don't know what reason the, the municipality and the project beneficiary decided just to apply for the renovation of the swimming pool. Uh, once we went on a spot check, on the spot check, we found that yes, they have beautiful or excellent looking swimming pool and awful ugly building, uh, the main building of the school with the uh, uh, leaking roof and uh, renovated just the first and the second floor of the school. And the question was uh, why you are not using the swimming pool and why you have partially renovated the school. The answer was amazing. The answer was, well, we, it was easier and faster to prepare the project for the renovation of the swimming pool. And we decided to renovate only the first two floors because it, there was a limit in the funding. And, uh, but now we are so, uh, so poor in financial financing, uh, we don't have enough uh, funds to, for, the, for the maintenance of the pool, so we are not using it. Uh, and this was the, this is just a one very small example on uh, how we should never implement any kind of project, and uh, that we need to have wiser policy, of course, in more global terms as well. So, uh, from the point of view of the regional development, I, I might say that uh, me myself as minister, but as, as a whole as a team, we are looking because the, the regional policy is a policy which is. Uh, which is, first of all, multi-sectoral policy, and at the end of the day, each of the other sectoral and horizontal and uh, policies are interconnected, interlinked with us. Uh, that's why we are, uh, uh, we are trying and we need to have the, let's say, the global picture, the global view, and to set, uh, to set in such a way the regional policy objectives and priorities so to, to have the other policy intervening and supporting and provided value added and uh, 
connecting with each other. Otherwise, if, if everyone will implement its own policy in the different areas and sectors, being uh, education, health, whatever, uh, then we lose, uh, we lose uh, let's say, the global, the global view. Uh, that's why uh, we've tried, I'm not, I'm not working uh, so much on this, but that's why we decided with that we need to develop our national spatial plan, spatial development concept, a long-term one. Uh, really, uh, our attempt was uh, to, to show and to find the best way on how to develop uh, the territory of, the, of our country in a way so to minimize three important things to minimize such uh, the, the big uh, migration from small villages and cities to the big ones how to minimize uh, so-called white spots on the map it's obvious that we don't have them because the tendency all over Europe, not only and globally as well, is of course that people are moving to the bigger cities. They, uh, we are becoming more and more urbanized, and uh, there are not enough young people still willing to go back to, to live in villages or to work in the agricultural sector. And this is a problem, especially for a country like ours, where we have great potential in agriculture, not only, but in tourism, agriculture, not only in economy. Uh, so after a very detailed analysis we have made, uh, we uh, found that the best model for development of, uh, of our territory and uh, our special development is so-called polycentric model for regional development, moderate polycentric model. What, mo what we mean by that? Currently we have the tendency that uh, everyone is willing to stay mostly in the capital, in Sofia, and uh, in the other six big cities. And this is this is the best migration, and uh, of course it is because of best employment opportunities and best infrastructure available anyway in those in the biggest cities. So you see the red dots, uh, which are uh, the biggest cities, which are considered to be drivers of economic development of our country, and you see the city of Blagodgrad, which for in the past couple of years really managed because of so many young people living, working here because of their good infrastructure being on the, on the European corridor to, to increase uh, in, all the, in all the parameters, in all the criteria to become one of the nine already as of today big cities, excellent drivers for economic development of our country. Uh, now we are trying to push and to support uh, a little bit um, the, the city of Vidin as well, because the, this part of Bulgaria, southwest part of Bulgaria being our poorest region, not only in the country, but uh, uh, out of the all, all 28 European Union countries, uh, we really need to have more efforts here in this region because it is the less developed region in our country. So we have established a special European cities, starting from, from the capital, of course, then having the network of uh, the biggest cities, and to each of those big cities, we have selected at least one smaller, so-called satellite city, you see, this is the connection, so to each city, to have satellite city as, as a city balancing the development, because if we want to keep the, the population, the employment opportunities, and to keep business investing not only in the big cities, we need to invest a lot for out of all, uh, not only from, from the point of view of the infrastructure, but soft measures, so educational, social, health systems to be developed in at least in one close satellite, smaller city, in order to have um, even a uh, well developed, urbanized uh, model for the development of our country. So this is uh, our target because in the, on the whole uh, red dots you see, together with the satellite cities, we have here the more than 75% of the population of our country living in those cities. That's why we are targeting there all the investments both from the European Union grant funding together with the investments out of the state budget because in this way we cover the biggest part of the population. However, in the, those where you see the, the small green dots, 
this is um, uh, less developed to rural or peripheral, peripheral areas where we shall never forget investing and where we should put more and more effort to investing from out of all policies uh, in, the dif in the different sectors if we uh, want to to stick with the polycentric, moderate polycentric model for development and not to, to allow of having a totally to full depopulation and uh, really having white dots and less developed regions. So this is uh, how we have developed our national, national spatial development concept from the point of view of the long-term development of our region. And we are trying to promote this uh, development concept uh, and together with our, with our sector ministries, Ministry of Economy, of Transport, of Environment, of Agriculture, really when investing, when providing uh, even uh, criteria for project selection, always to have in mind that they have to be distributed all along, all along the, the cities and uh, the development of the region based on their potential, because we have developed for each of, the, for each of those regions analysis of what is the best potential there. So this is the kind of attempt to, to have the best priority and to promote the so, certain region with its, uh, with its uh, benefits, let's say. Uh, how we do support out of the possibilities of our ministry, the development of the infrastructure and public works of those regions. Uh, we are, have the, the European Union grant funding. We phased out uh, recently the previous uh, programming period, 2007-2013, 3 billion uh, level invested in regional development. Now we have more ambitious goal, and it could be seen from the name. Now we have program called Regions in Growth. We have invested in the very basic infrastructure development. Now we want to achieve the, the growth of those regions. That's why this is the, the wording important to, to have more ambitious uh, regional authorities, regions. So we now are investing more in our regions. I will tell you a little bit later what are the measures we are investing in. We are very much focused on uh, cross-border cooperation and uh, multi-country programs like uh, uh, our program for, for the Black Sea countries development, Danube River, all the countries along the Danube are of course bilateral programs like the one we have between our regions Bulgaria Serbia, Bulgaria Macedonia, Bulgaria Turkey because um, only through this kind of uh, cross-border cooperation we could support financially as well, but people more people-to-people -people connections and SME development along our border regions. And uh, recently we have developed a special national-wide uh, out-of-the-state budget targeted programs uh, to support uh, our uh, less developed regions. And if I go back to this map, I might say that uh, if we exclude Sofia, of course, the capital, from this region, because the Sofia is uh, the only place, the only region which is equal to the uh, well-developed uh, uh, metropolitan areas of, in the European Union. So Sofia has the parameters of having more than 75% of the average GDP uh, of the metropolitan areas in Europe, for which we are really proud. But if we exclude Sofia, the capital, being the well-developed region, all the rest, uh, the analysis shows that they are equally underdeveloped, with some, of course, with some exclusions like the, the bigger cities. So while we were analyzing how we need to support our less developed regions, we have to define which are the, the less developed regions in which we need to focus our efforts. And the sad news for us, for all of us, was that uh, in addition to the Northwest region, which is definitely the biggest and the, uh, really the, the most uh, underdeveloped region in our country, it appears that, uh, excluding the capital and the big cities, we have some other equally less underdeveloped regions, like, like Rodopi region, like Tranjasakar region, and our border areas and mountain areas. Uh, so we started from the idea of covering only the special focus, special targeted, targeted programs for the 
slope width region of our country, we needed to include uh, in the game our sub uh, programs in order to develop that. I was thinking to say a few words about uh, this site, what uh, the, the example of Gorgodra, where we are today, certain factors from how to attract investment and which are the strong, medium, and low factors really providing the, the attractiveness of this region for the investment because this region is uh, really proceeding well, but uh, this is just if you are so much interested. So, on the basis of the analysis, on the basis of the National Special Development Program and uh, the financial instruments which I mentioned, we switch to integrated approach. So, not to allow anymore the, uh, the example which I gave you with the school we, or with some other municipalities where we have invested so much in uh, local infrastructure like uh, urban environment, uh, walking areas, parks, uh, uh, street renovated and then all of a sudden six months later they just decide to, to change the water and sewage system and they just doing the, all, the, all the streets which were implemented. So we now are some require, requiring so-called integrated approach. So once we have a project it should include uh, the whole infrastructure, underground, on the ground infrastructure combined together so to have the, as we call it, one plus one equal to three effect. This is the only the only way to, to proceed on where we are. I will not so much stop on the what exactly we are funding out of our operational program because I have already mentioned we are supporting the urban development, urban transport, and uh, educational social infrastructure. Something very interesting and something new which we are uh, planning for this year, starting from this year is a little bit different approach just from providing grant funding to our local authorities and to our beneficiaries for the development of infrastructure. We want to promote more, how to say, public-private partnership, business-to-business -business initiatives. So we have here provided that 12% uh, of our, out of our program for regions and growth to be uh, given not just a simple grant to our local authorities, but to be given to the business initiatives or any kind of project promoters, which are uh, preparing projects related to urban development and urban environment, but projects which are providing, uh, which are revenue generating, which are providing employment, and which in long term might have uh, revenue generated, even though they will be supported with a long term low interest rate or without interest rate investment in all sectors. It could be a factory, it could be a just a swimming pool or sports, sports facility, uh, any kind of uh, project which is part of the urban environment, which is revenue generating and uh, really promoting the development of the region itself. So we will have one special urban development fund for Sofia. Definitely Sofia is a different story. One for North, one for South Bulgaria, and we want to promote first more financial institutions and banks investing in those funds. We will provide this this uh, amount of funds as an initial budget, so we we are uh, we hope to have leverage effect at least two, so even to so not to multiply, but uh, we even more as uh, attractive financing, and then to finance uh, long term uh, projects for. For anything, for uh, sports facilities, as I mentioned, parking season, because really we need to, to, to promote the development of projects. And we have one special fund, as an idea, to establish special fund for investments in tourism. Because touristic attractions are very good, but they need to be, again, uh, based on uh, revenue generation, and they uh, really to have uh, to explore the excellent uh, culture of historic touristic attractions we do have for mineral water, which we are into, and uh, then again to have a project uh, which is uh, generating uh, revenue, which is providing employment and which is benefiting for the GDP of the certain region. By the way, I don't know whether you are aware, but Bulgaria is the second country in the world of richness of mineral water resources. We have 600 sources of uh, mineral water and we are after Iceland second in the world, which is for which we are not known and I'm sure not all of you is aware, are aware of this, so we need to explore those waters because they could be used for, for spa, for medical tourism, for heating and energy efficiency as well, so 
This is something to promote. So do we, through this kind of uh, funding mechanism, we are trying to push to promote more, more uh, let's say, uh, product promoter business initiatives in, in this area as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we're investing still in, uh, in rope and uh, in some other infrastructure. I have already mentioned our cross-border cooperation programs for which uh, for which we are really pushing our small and supporting our small not, not only SMEs but uh, municipalities to be active and proactive in uh, preparing projects because we have heard of them. They are amounting to more than uh, half a billion uh, euro investment as an opportunity and this opportunity should be and this is an opportunity for the university as well to apply in these projects. So this is uh, something so because we were discussing what are the opportunities not only from the sector operational program, but as well for this kind of uh, joint transnational programs, we are more than welcome to apply the university as well. It could be done on the student uh, government, as, uh, as you mentioned it, because we are flexible there as well, so it is, uh, it is a great opportunity there as well. I have already mentioned that we have the program for targeted program to support our less developed regions. And uh, it appears that uh, out of 265 in total municipalities we do have in our country, we have 148 of them being part of our less developed regions. That's why we are so much focused in investing there uh, more and more efforts uh, and more and more funding for the for their development. Uh, I will stop here because I might tell you what are the other things that on which we are so much focused because as it was uh, mentioned in our in my presentation in the beginning, <coughs> we are, our main ministry is mostly known as the Ministry of the Road, as we are in charge of the, uh, the construction of uh, new roads or maintenance or not, or not maybe sometimes not uh, being able to maintain perfectly all the roads. So, uh, I, of course, I will be more than happy to tell you more about our plans for development of the road infrastructure in the country. We as the Ministry are in charge as well of cadaster and the development of cadaster, another area where we have long-term objectives to reform the cadaster because it's a pity to say that we have only 20% coverage of the digital cadaster in our cadaster industry, so this is another interesting uh, challenge I have in front of me. Uh, and of course we are as the Ministry are in charge of the overall construction in the country. We are preparing and establishing not only the guidelines, the legislation. We are the one to issue all the construction <coughs> permits and to provide overall construction control on all levels in the state. On the national construction sites, we are the one in charge, or we control the local authorities. We are in charge of the civil registrations of the citizens' registration, the national, national database of citizens is as well maintained by the whole ministry, which is as well not so much not so much well known, uh, and uh, we are in charge of the famous program. Today I visited nine of the buildings already renovated, energy efficiency program for multifamily buildings as a part of the global priority and policy of the Ministry for Housing, housing policy, not only <coughs> of the multifamily uh, buildings, but overall housing policy. So this is another important part of our priorities. So, as I mentioned, the regional policy is a multi-sector one, and this is the reason our ministry to cover a lot of uh, different, uh, like I said, like the fair responsibilities, both infrastructure and soft measures. So, I will be more than happy to share with you anything you are interested in, our ministry, and I really thank you for your time. that uh, you are spending a lot of funding on uh, cross-border cooperation. However, there, is, there has been criticism in the European Union, not only in Bulgaria, that cross-border cooperation programs are actually not working as efficiently as they are supposed to be, and that cooperation doesn't, in fact, really happen in between countries, in border areas especially. Do you think that there is actually prospects of this imp the situation improving, or is it still at a standstill? Uh, well, uh, 
how to say, on one side, I can agree that we could have much more, let's say, well-developed cross-border cooperation between the, the smaller regions. Uh, from the point of view of, uh, let's say, the investment uh, priorities we do have. And on the other side, I believe that uh, um, we have a lot of project measures uh, implemented already, and I found them uh, extremely important, for the, especially for the smaller cities and villages uh, in the border area. Uh, because uh, even though they are much more smaller as investment, from the point of view of budget, they are, they are important for those small villages, uh, for people to understand better each other, for just people, uh, children, for example, from the school in uh, whatever region we say, just uh, being flexible and having joint programs uh, between the, the different schools or SMEs working together. Uh, so I think that we need to a little bit uh, change the objectives of our program, and this is what we are trying to do. Because up to now, uh, quite a big percentage of the investments were so much in soft measures, and uh, usually we see that those soft measures are very well implemented for the time period of the project while they do have funding. But once the project is completed, Everyone, every, everything stops, and this is where we lose the really the, the value added of those investments and of those projects. So, for the sake of the project, <coughs> everything is brilliant and, and successful. Once the funding is complete, everything just stops, and everything is. Uh, this, this is uh, this is where I found uh, the biggest challenge uh, to continue, and uh, this is where we are still thinking on how. Uh, thank you, Minister, for your presentation. Uh, my question is related maybe to the previous question about projects and the strategies for evaluating the efficiency of those, pro with those projects since, uh, like, as your story with the pool and uh, the implementation and the using of the funds, what strategies uh, have you developed to decrease the, those efficiencies? Thank you. As I mentioned, really, the, the, it is really the, a matter of uh, good evaluation of the efficiency because otherwise we end up with those kind of projects. Of course, we do have excellent examples as well, but uh, comparing to some like those which I mentioned, it's really worrying sometimes. Uh, I think the first, uh, even we as a, as a citizen, as a society, need to, to try, and this is what uh, we are trying now to, to promote more, to, to change the way of thinking. Sometimes we thought, I think, uh, there were some journalists, one, one journalist here as well, always we are so much questioned by media, how much you absorb, what is the percentage of the absorption. Of course, absorption is important, but mostly, the most important thing is what, what is the result, what is the, the value added of the investment. So to stop so much thinking of percentages and figures, but so, thinking more of the, of the result. So, uh, uh, for the sake of the reporting uh, requirement of the regulations, we have excellent indicators and we are you know, report them. Uh, not only annually, quarterly to the European Commission and for the, in, in papers, everything is good. What uh, we are trying now to change in our approach are first to stop thinking of absorption, but thinking of the value added. Second, to, to change a little bit on how we uh, even set out the uh, indicators of achievement. Uh, because sometimes we just put nice figures to look nice, but uh, either we could not achieve them, we, or uh, if we achieve them, then you see that just for the sake of achieving certain indicators, you just miss the important thing in the investment. And the third thing is, uh, as I shown uh, shown on the picture, is to have more integrated approach. Uh, that's why we decided to stop in certain investment priorities, to stop the competitive approach. Because the competition, for example, between the city of Burgorgrad, which is uh, well experienced with a lot of experienced people, to compete for the same amount of fund with, uh, with the city of Kneja, for example, with, uh, where you have uh, less capacity, less investment needs, it's, it's, a not, it's not a fair competition. 
those who are competing should be at least equal of size, of size and capabilities in order to have fair competition. So we decided to uh, to skip this kind of uh, insufficient competition, but to have either we have targeted support for predefined integrated projects with with proven value, or if we don't have enough funds to to cover all the needs of uh, let's say of the big big nine cities, then we have a competitive approach, but uh, between equal parts. So this is this is the way we are trying to. Work. Maybe not a very good question, uh, but still, do you target the, the regions which are undeveloped? When you target with your economic program, do you make an account what is the population there, how many people are in active age who can take part in, in this program because in many regions which are underdeveloped, the majority of the population is possibly elderly people who more need help to survive than can participate in such projects. So the program is you will attract people towards there from outside. I have no idea of the ratio. The people who are not only in active age, but are people who already have work because there are minorities who are not uh, experienced with any kind of work. It's not easy to make somebody at the age of 30 to start working for first time in life. So that's my question. Do you make these accounts realistically? <coughs> at least we are trying. <laughs> Uh, this is the short answer. <coughs> yes, uh, first of all, I should say, as, as it could be seen from the, from the figures, in those municipalities which we consider to be underdeveloped, less developed, uh, the population uh, out of the total population of the country living in those uh, areas is uh, almost 30% of the population, which is quite a big percentage from the state. And yes, uh, in uh, those areas we have elderly population. Which is uh, which is a challenge because in, uh, in in this case, especially for the north one northwest uh, region in our country, if we want to have growth, if we hope to if we uh, target it to have an increase in the, uh, in the employment and everything, we need to bring back young people there. This is the only way. So the measures we are proposing are on one side the development of the infrastructure, definitely we do need to develop the infrastructure there, then to have uh, special incentives for the business to invest there in any kind of investment, and then uh, third, to have special programs for well-educated younger generation to come back, which includes uh, better housing uh, incentives and housing opportunities for them, uh, good uh, education for their, for their kids because it's, uh, this is a very important part of the analysis shown that a young people, young family or graduates, uh, if we want to promote them not to stay in Gorgorgrad or in Sofia but to go to the city of Bidi even, we need to have a good uh, education and health infrastructure, not only infrastructure for services, in, and housing uh, in order to not only it's not only about the salary sometimes and infrastructure in order to promote so this is a combination of measures and uh, the aging is uh, is taken into consideration and all the additional uh, measures uh, to be developed there and this is the only chance because even now we do have envisaged and we are providing uh, special incentives like zero taxation in the incomes of the companies which are investing in low quite region. And still, they're going there, they see the place, they find the place, and they say, okay, it's excellent, but those incentives are totally not enough because we, you don't have in that region existing uh, working pools which is uh, well-educated. Because it's a pity to say, but the uh, biggest part of the unemployed, those who are, who are registered to be unemployed, are unemployed because of uh, First, of uh, lack of education. Second, because they became lazy and they are not willing to anymore to be uh, qualified in different areas. And second, they are so much dependent on the social family. Uh, so the only chance is then to attract a new one or to think in uh, the carrot and the stick 
provided stopping the social payments uh, against uh, the qualification of their employment. So this is indeed a challenge, and uh, in, especially in the, those populated uh, areas or areas where we do have uh, maybe uh, or mainly uh, elderly populations. So it's not an easy job. Analysis show that even in other countries with this kind of programs, it took them more than 10 to 15 years to invest in this in order to, to develop them. Question. <clears throat> what is your thinking about the desirability or non desirability of urbanization just as a general process? <coughs> it's imagined that it promotes the overall economic growth of the country, but if it's more urbanized, it's, uh, it's easier to provide the infrastructure, the educational opportunities. Uh, market opportunities if the population is more coalesced in, in a small number of bigger urban regions? I mean, are you fighting a losing battle by trying to, to keep all regions on an equal footing? Uh, well, first of all, I, I fully agree. And uh, this is, uh, in long term, we are going to become more and more economic. Definitely, this is, this is the way, and this is the direction. That's why we are now so much focused and uh, me as a minister, I am attending uh, each quarter on the ministerial meetings of all ministers of regional development in the EU. And uh, now the, the biggest, let's say, the biggest part of our discussion is the urban agenda. Because uh, it, it is obvious that it is easier to, to <coughs> develop urban areas, it is easier to attract uh, both young people, to develop infrastructure and to develop businesses there. So, uh, this is the direction and this is where we are. The, the, the challenge here and what I've tried to explain in the showing the so-called polycentric or moderate polycentric development is yes, we are going into the direction that we are investing and we are, we are focusing on urban areas, mainly. And uh, the only, the only let's say, uh, the most important, let's say, target there is not to allow everyone to go to the capital. To have to focus on urban areas, but to have them distributed all around the country, with a different, of course, uh, with a different e effect and development. But uh, still, the, the urban agenda is ahead of us, and the urban the urbanization it is desired, and the, this is where we are going. To. Uh, on the other side, being a country rich of uh, fertile land and excellent uh, opportunities for agriculture, we need to to keep investing there and to develop our, to use, uh, the, to have the best use of those agricultural lands. Uh, and uh, even I should be very honest, but this is my personal opinion, that those subsidies for agricultural development, starting from the net donors of the EU, like France, they are very good. They are supporting the agricultural areas and everything, but they are spoiling the agricultural development and they are uh, the least supporting the competition in the agricultural sector because they are so much subsidized that uh, now the, the competition is is challenged, let's say. So yes, we do need to support, we do need to invest in rural areas, but in any case uh, the, the organization is desired and the organization is where we need to focus our efforts and policies because anyway uh, as I mentioned, 75% uh, of the Bulgarian uh, citizens are living in urban areas, 85% of the European one, and uh, something like 80% globally in the world one. So we are urbanized anyway. Good question. I may have a privilege. How do you interact with regional governments? Uh, does the regional government take an active part in the regional development uh, in the country? Because we do a lot of uh, projects directly with municipalities and public private uh, partnerships and businesses. And where does the regional government fit? Well, definitely, we are working very closely now. Without the, the regional authorities, the regional governments, we can do nothing of any, any of the projects and priorities which I mentioned. Uh, so we are uh, supporting them and pushing them more and more to be more proactive on the 
a bottom-up approach because so we are rather centralized as a country, which uh, inherited from the previous uh, socialist time of the planned economy, uh, which was planned on a national level. On the other side, we are trying to, to push to promote the, the bottom-up approach, uh, at, at least in those projects for which I uh, which I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, to push them to be more innovative, more creative, and to to decide locally what they do need. Not it, it's easy for us. We decide. We send the funding. We 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 select the contractor and we implement the project. But this is not the way we sh it should be. So we are trying to really to to work with them and to keep them that they busy pushing them to promote projects. So they have a chance to develop so, their own strategies. So, uh, so uh, this is uh, <coughs> this is again uh, not an easy job because in those regions like Bogorodran, like Burgas, where we have active uh, society, uh, where we have very active and proactive local authority, mayor, municipal council, it's easy to go with. But uh, in those less developed regions, which I mentioned, they have lack of capacity, lack of new ideas. They just and uh, they just say, okay, but the state should support us. Okay, we already support. Tell us what you believe should be your project, where to support it. Give us some ideas. Be proactive in those. Okay, you just need to, to support us. And this is the, the regular answer we have. Uh, unfortunately, even in the regional council, the, we are attending. So that's why we need to we really need to support them. Target with the target with, uh, with some targeted measures in order. I guess to, to have more, more success there. And always there was a debate whether we do need fiscal decentralization, whether we do need to become more decentralized as a country, or to continue and to keep on uh, working on this uh, semi centralized model, I mean, say, where we have the, the capital, the government, the central government deciding. Uh, me personally, I believe that still we, as a mentality in our country, we are more centralized. In, uh, in most of the in most of the sectors and policies, because it's always assumed that okay, and then the minister and the, or the prime minister, especially in our government, should decide, should help, should intervene. So we are, as a mentality in this region, I believe, more more centralized in our country and plan. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, yes, Sabo. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> uh, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Minister. Uh, my question would be about, as I'm a proponent of min minimal, minimal government, uh, and I see clearly that the government interference into developing the re regions of Bulgaria is really huge. Uh, what is your sense about the uh, private enterprise involvement? What are the incentives you are creating for the private corporations, be it on local level or, or international level? What are the incentives you are giving to them to invest in Bulgaria in these specific regions? How are you diversifying between the regions uh, and mm. between the proposals you are making and between uh, to the private enterprises? to ensure that they invest, and also how are you using the concept of corporate private responsibility to your advantage, and uh, what would you <laughs> be doing um, <laughs> after... Uh, <laughs> we clearly see that this is uh, funded by the Bulgarian government or funds come from the European Union. Uh, what measures are you taking uh, to ensure that after government considers that the goal has achieved, that it keeps developing and uh, the uh, already achieved goals do not deteriorate, however, like continue growing. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much for those <laughs> <laughs> uh, important uh, As I mentioned, uh, uh, we, uh, we are now even changing the way we, we were thinking. In the, in the last year, because we were so much focused in the past years, especially after accession in the European Union in 2007, on, as I mentioned, absorption of direct grant funding to the different areas, both infrastructure, soft measures, agriculture, economy, SMEs, whatever. And uh, we forgot about the, the corporate private initiative and they are available, they were just not always given a chance. Even I should be very honest with you, 
we have a so-called PPP law, public-private partnership law, which has never been uh, implemented in the best way. And I mean, in reality, with excellent project, where uh, because the, the private sector is really can happy to invest in common project, but uh, it uh, it happened several years ago that concessions or especially PPP is something very dangerous. Someone, the minister, the, the mayor, the regional government could be blamed of having selected the, the wrong partner or having something behind if selected the partner. So at a certain moment, everyone decided not to have any kind of PPP or um, this kind of investment and to, to be very transparent and it's better not to have any. So we ended up that now we are phasing out European Union grant funding in many areas like uh, development of uh, basic infrastructure, the European Union grants are phasing out and we need now to <coughs> find the best way to have uh, new financing and the only possibility in this area is to have uh, private or corporate financing. So now we need to, be, to become again open and to, to start working with the private initiatives, with the corporate, uh, with the company, and pro proving that it is not something dangerous, it is not something, and uh, we will not be blamed any time that we have selected someone having something besides. And uh, really to become more flexible in establishing any kind of this, uh, this kind of initiative. So yes, the, the short answer is yes. We are open and we are working on it. First, the first step is to establish good legislation, providing transparent rules on how to select and how to promote those initiatives, and how to, to support and to provide incentives to, to private uh, initi initiatives, uh, really to invest in the region, both on regional and on central level. Uh, and uh, the same in the same approach, as I mentioned, not only from the regional program for the regional growth, we decided that from each of the operational programs providing grant funding, we will have at least 10% of the fund given to the business, given not to the local authorities, not to the uh, public bodies, but given to the business to have, uh, to have this kind of projects and to promote more and more uh, thinking of this kind of PPPs and uh, revenue generating projects together with the state, together with the local authorities, is the only way to to push forward in, the, in that direction. Sabo, you have a question? Yes. Um, connected to the bottom-up approach of municipality projects, do you think that setting up a network for municipalities to share best practices, success stories, and project ideas would be beneficial and incentivize them to come up with their projects and not expect something from above? Uh, yes, and I think we have a quite well operating National Association of Municipalities in Bulgaria. They are really active and proactive, in providing those networks, sharing experience uh, in different areas. And uh, they are an NGO, but they are fully accepted by the government. And uh, all the projects, uh, even concrete proposals we are launching, we are coordinating and consulting them always with them because they know, they know what are the needs, and then we are using them uh, to to promote and to to have incentives for group of municipalities uh, to work and to apply for those projects. So, yes, I believe it is a very good tool. Now uh, we have, we are trying, it is not always, uh, as I mentioned, successful, to promote more, um, they, we call them, I don't know you call them in English, but um, uh, we're trying to, to promote establishments of at least three municipalities in certain regions and this is as a minimum, so uh, in order for them to be able to apply to start the consortium mm -hmm. funding, this is um, kind of really promoting this. It is not so easy. In some regions, it is mission impossible, still. But it again depends on the personality of the mayor and the local. Uh, there was a question in the back. I need to take maybe two more. Okay. Okay. I, I just wanted to. Um, is it my turn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to ask again because you mentioned that you were going to focus on the urban areas, but not only on the capital of Sofia, but the, the other six biggest uh, towns. 39. I don't know. 
apart from the other six towns. I was asking, like, because you attached a smaller town next to every one of the six big oh, ones, okay. yes, are you planning on uh, reallocating investment from uh, the biggest towns into the smaller ones, of the, the, the satellite towns next to the biggest ones? No, we have already planned the existing project available in combination for big cities and for smaller cities. Uh, in this uh, in this period, so not reallocating from the existing one, but promoting any kind of measures to be always uh, taken into consideration, not for the big city, for the satellite one as well, in uh, in, in any other program, not only from out of power, the one for the region to go. For smaller cities, we have separate priority axis out of which we have provided, we are providing funding for the smaller cities. Um, you mentioned that <coughs> Bulgarian ag agriculture got spoiled by the European no, no, funding. Europe, you know, overall, European ah, okay. Do you fear that by <coughs> the 10% that you mentioned that will be specifically uh, for private institutions, uh, like a special funding that they will get, do you fear that perhaps Bulgarian business could get spoiled by sort of relying entirely on those funds? No, we need sorry we need to separate those ten percent out of the, each operational program to be invested definitely through financial engineering funds and mechanisms where the business should be the project promoter, not some other local authority, are related to, to big sector operational programs which are the regional growth one for the infrastructure, regional infrastructure, the one uh, for um, environmental infrastructure, the one for SMEs where we have much more than 10%, of course, and uh, the other ones, which is the good governance and the other. In the agricultural area, they are always like Vatican State in the state. They have different rules of the rural development program, so they don't have such a mechanism. And don't they, in the rural area, they have either subsidies, the direct subsidies to farmers for the, on the basis of the land, land sold, or they do have certain grant funding for uh, either buying certain equipment or developing the farm or whatever. So these are the, still the measures there. They are not so, not yet where we are with other sectors out of the agriculture where, we, where they, do, they do have uh, any, any special funding, uh, let's say, local uh, loan funding there. However, in rural areas, especially not only in the subsidies programs, but in the other programs for the development of the factories, machinery, supplies, whatever, uh, the beneficiaries there are 100% uh, private owned companies, because in agriculture we have 100% private ownership, and only for the <coughs> local authorities, infrastructure, or the municipality. So, in any case, the old investments out of the uh, agricultural funds are targeted and are available only to the private sector. By spoiling, I mean that if you if you subsidize a lot uh, based on the direct payment for, for, for a piece of land or for certain sectors like meat processing or whatever, you uh, you change the the competitiveness because for so many years we were financing. For example, just the food processing sector or some other sectors. So at that time, once they, they are so much subsidized, they are well, of course, uh, presented on the market. And the other sectors, where we do have still a lot of capacity to develop, to unlock, they are not subsidized. And of course, there is uh, the opportunity to be well presented both on our market or on the common European market, together with the external uh, markets which, for which we were famous of, like uh, Middle Eastern Asia, Bulgaria used to be the biggest exporter of meat and uh, fruits and vegetables, which is not the case now. This, this is what I mean by pointing Okay, last question. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, ladies mentioned before, the interest of the young generation in agriculture is declining, as is in most of the former uh, communist states and Eastern European states, what would be um, incentives, in your opinion, for especially Bulgaria to uh, try to readdress or redirect the younger generation's interest in uh, an agricultural career? Thank you. I'm not 
to be honest, and I have no answer to this right now for the question. However, as I mentioned, uh, the, the only way, as we see as of today, is by providing opportunity for any for any kind of uh, project initiatives in the, uh, in the agricultural sector where we, they do have subsidy, subsidies and uh, grants for the development of small farms or whatever. The, the problem is really that, uh, I don't know why, but young people are normally not trusted. Even if it is 100% subsidized, not so many young people are willing to go back to their villages and really take care of animals.